Hello everyone and welcome to Journal for Jills. My name is Lewis and in today's episode of JFG Meets we have former Gillingham forward Greg Cundall on the show. Obviously, unfortunately, due to the current coronavirus pandemic, we were apart when having the chat so it did have to be a phone interview but do stay tuned for inside stories on Greg's experience in Gillingham's academy, signing pro, trying to break through, life in the dressing room under AD Pennock, the game at Northampton, low moves, moving on, recent injuries, future ambitions and more. Enjoy so we are now joined by former Gillingham forward, Greg Cundall. Greg, thank you for coming on, mate. How are you keeping at the minute? No worries. Um, yeah, all good, thanks. Nice Try man. Stay safe. How about you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, mate. I'm good, thank you. Cracking on, you know how it is. But um, we'll try and provide some, some entertainment for people, um, a little bit of a distraction to stuff. So we'll crack on to the, the football side of things. And something we always ask our guests on the channel, what got you into football to start with? It's all I've really known, to be honest, from a young age. I probably started playing a bit later than most probably about six or seven okay. but since then it's all I've all I've really all I've really known joined my my local Sunday team uh, and then just went from there really and obviously you joined Gillingham pretty early how did that that come about yeah so I joined at I think 15 um, I was just playing for Cray Wanderers a Sunday league club by me and playing for my district Bromley district and I got scouted playing for the district um, and then got got a trial with Gillingham. Um, yeah, I think I was 15 and then signed under 15, under 16s um, and went from there, really. And how was it playing in the academy there? Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, I met a lot of good mates who, I'm still, who I still talk to today uh, and getting coached by um, Brian Ball. It was, it was really good for me. But yeah, it was a long way for me at the time because we were training down in Canterbury, which is an hour, hour 15. On, on weekdays, it was hard. But um, yeah, I loved it. And obviously you went on to, to get a pro deal. Do you remember the feeling of signing your first professional contract? Yeah, so obviously I was a scholar for two years, uh, full-time. And then getting off the, the pro contract was the big, the, big, the first big, in my career really um, so yeah that was great um, you're obviously waiting all, all your second year to find out if you're going to be offered a, a professional contract so to, to get that was a good feeling and you were involved with the first team quite young as well I remember you, you being on the bench a few times and stuff like that um, sort of before you turned 18 did you feel the pressure at that point? Um, no I didn't they, they just chucked me in training with the first team as a I think I was a second year scholar, so 17, 18, I think 17 probably. And I just, I'd done well. And I got told the day before we were travelling, they said, oh, you're coming, you come with us. So, yeah, it was a shock, but I didn't really feel no pressure because I didn't really, I wasn't, nothing was really expected of me at the time. Yeah. Was that, was that the gang of four that, um, yeah, it so- was, yeah, it was when they was in charge. I think it was crew away. Was yeah. The, uh, the game that I was on the on the bench for. Well, I don't even think I was meant to be on the bench. I travelled as 19th man. Yeah. Uh, and then someone had a fitness test and, and weren't, weren't fit, so I snuck on the bench. And obviously, um, as any young player would, um, you want to be involved with the first team, but you've got some you've got some loan loan spells. Um, between sort of 2015 and 2016, you're going on loan a little bit, um, like East Grinstead, um, Tip Tilbury, Margate. Um, how how are those loan spells for you and what are your targets when you're going to those sort of clubs yeah um, they were good all, all, uh, all the loan clubs they were very different sort of moves but they were all good for me in different ways um, my first one East Grinstead me and uh, Callum Emptage we both went together we had no idea about the league Yeah, we didn't know what we were walking into basically um, but yeah it was good I think we stayed for three or four months um, my first my first bit of proper men's football so that was good I scored I scored a few goals there as well um, so yeah it, give, it gave me confidence I could score goals at, at that level and higher uh, and then I went on to Tilbury which was the equivalent league just the the Essex side done okay there in a struggling team at the time um, scored a few goals there then come back to Jills and went to Margate which was two leagues above the previous loan so that was another step up uh, that was tough 
you saw the difference in that in that league straight away, more physical. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was all good for me to learn. How different or how important do you think it is to learn at any level, really? The rather than playing academy football, you're going out to get experience in men's football. Yeah, it is massive. To be fair, I think we'd um, we'd play the occasional twenty threes game at Jules, but there were nothing like the games that you'd play on the weekend for your loan team. Like, I, if I had the choice, I'd be playing the the league, the uh, the games on loan. Yeah, it means something because you can we'd play midweek games. Uh, the 23s but they were just friendlies and to be honest the other team would turn up we'd both pass the ball around but there was no real hunger to win the game yeah as yeah. you play even in that in the in the lower leagues everyone they fight they fight for every ball um, so yeah that's a massive difference I think everyone should play at a level where they can get games where it means something rather than just playing the uh, the under twenty threes games. Yeah, I was going to say I think especially if you're in a Premier League academy and you're sort of twenty two, twenty three, still playing under twenty threes, it's probably best to just go out and play football, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you if you're at a Prem club and you can get a League One club to go and to take you for a season, you'll you'll be flying. When you're when you're on loan at these clubs, obviously you're in constant contact with Gillingham. What sort of thing are they saying to you whilst you're playing on loan at these clubs? Yeah, uh, so you're obviously still training with Gillingham three, four times a week, depending on when the other loan club trains. But yeah, yeah they, they obviously look out for the scores. I remember coming in Monday morning uh, and if you scored, everyone would know. Like, and they'd be saying, oh, how's your goal? Which was nice. Um, they'd just say, just keep doing what you're doing. They'd come to watch, and then yeah, they'd let you know what you what you're doing good, what you could do better. So you couldn't hide from what was going on. It's not like you're going away and then they're not watching. Yeah, which yeah. is good. Yeah, even some games would be recorded, so they'd they'd um, ask to see goals or whatever. Yeah. I think I'm right in saying you got recalled by Gillingham. Do you know why you got recalled at that point? Did you were you aware? Um, I think AD Pennant had just come in. So yeah, I was doing. I was on loan at uh, yeah Bishop Stalford in the Conference South, doing okay. Um, but I was training really well at Jules at the time. I remember, and I think AD Pennant had only been in for maybe a month, two months, and Jules was struggling in the league. Uh, and maybe he thought, "I'm doing well in training. Let's let's see what he can do." Um, in League One uh, I remember we were I don't know if we were in the bottom four at the time or around it but it was close maybe he just thought let's see if he can help us get out of this I was on the bench for so many games before waiting for your chance and then fight. Well, I think we were 3-0 down away to Rochdale um, which obviously isn't a great great game to come on to it was one of my best my proudest achievements in, in football yeah, one of those you always remember. And just you mentioned AD Pennock and obviously the likes of you mentioned the gang of four, just just Edinburgh, um AD Pennock, Steve Lovell, that sort of thing. How is it as a young player going through different managers and having to prove yourself? Yeah, it can be tough, but it can be a good thing for a young player if you're not if you're not being played or being looked at by the manager. So you can you can look at it in both ways really. Obviously different managers want different things. Um, so yeah it's hard to adjust to at a young age I think from the youth team to in the four or five years I was there there was probably six or seven managers yeah um, whether they were caretaker so yeah it's hard to um, to adjust to what each manager wants but you get used to it and how were the different managers with you in particular uh, all 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 uh, Oh, we're good. I wouldn't have a bad word to say about any of them. I think AD gave me my league debut, but Justin gave me my my first professional contract, gave me my debut. I think it was in the checker trade. Okay. Um, and he was good, good with me. Um, yeah, AD gave me my league debut, gave me a chance to 
to play in the league and then he went and Steve Lovell who I worked with in the youth team who knew a lot about me gave me gave me a league start worked with me pretty much day in day out on everything a striker needs um, so yeah all, all helped in different ways and going back to life under AD Pennock, how was that because like you say the squad the, the team was struggling um, what was that like to be around yeah it was tough for me at first I was on loan so I kind of wasn't in the same bracket as them boys I was out playing games uh, but yeah it's hard we wasn't doing great, so you come in on a on a Monday or what, and the team's lost again. Uh, but you just got to try and pick yourself up. He he was good, you know. He tried his best, and we did stay up that season. Yeah. So you could say he done he done his job there. But yeah, I think he's a, he's a good manager. Um, but it was just tough the circumstances that season. And I know he's come out since he's left and even at the time as well and said that he has to sort out the dressing room a bit. I spoke to Steve Lovell, who was obviously a coach under AD Pennock recently, and he was saying that that's sort out the dressing room a bit. From a point of view where you were in that dressing room, how was it from your point of view? I think that year, the young boys weren't in the same dressing room as the, as the, as the first team players. So I wasn't actually in the changing room on a day-to-day basis with them. Obviously, I would be if it was a match day or, and I spent, I obviously spent the time with them on a training round, but I don't, it was obviously a problem for the, for the management staff, but all the boys got along well on the training ground. There was no problems. Um, so from my point of view, it's probably a little bit different to what they saw because I just I just wanted to play football and didn't really look at any any of the off the field things at the time. Okay, and like you say, it was all it was all a bit mixed in terms of the dressing rooms you're in and stuff. But that that game at Northampton, can you explain what it was like staying up on the last day at Northampton? Yeah, so I wasn't in the squad, um, but me, Tom Hadler, Mitch Dickinson, uh, DJ. I think we went up. We drove up ourselves and we watched from the stands. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was so nerve wracking watching from the sides. Uh, obviously, we were, we only needed. I think I don't know if it relied on another team. If if another team lost, all we needed to do was draw. Um, I think I remember right, you missed the penalty. Yeah. But the game was it was a terrible game anyway, weren't it? Yeah. Yeah. No. I was- uh, both teams just wanted it to be done. Yeah, I feel like um, there was a bit of confusion at the end because I remember because after the full time whistle, we were waiting on Port Vale's result, who were at Fleetwood, and I think they were drawing. Right. And if they'd have won, but I think we we ended up playing for a point. So yeah, I think it was a bit like from a player's point of view as well. You don't know what league you're going to be playing in that sort of thing. Um, yeah, definitely. At that point, my contract was up, and we hadn't heard. No one had heard nothing about a new contract, so it was kind of like that. Sort of would have depended that would have um, made up the manager's mind or chairman's mind on what players would stay and who would go. So yeah, it was massive yeah. for us to stay in the league. And like you say, your contract was up, and you did you did get the new contract. Did you know? Did well, you say you, di- you didn't have a clue, but at what point did you find out you were you were stay? Well, you're getting offered the new deal. Uh, yeah, it took a while. To be fair, the season finished. Um, in early May was it uh, and yeah I was waiting for I'd say at least two two three weeks to know whether I was getting offered the contract I'd heard before that they'd want to keep me I spoke okay. to AD um, and then things sort of went quiet for a few weeks and and there was one or two boys who I'd spoke to who were like in the same position as me weren't sure if they were getting offered anything Okay. And then, yeah, it finally, a few weeks after the season ended, I, f- I, f- I got offered the contract and I, was, I wasn't I was planning on going anywhere else, so I obviously took that and then, yeah, went went away and then come back for the new season. I was going to say, did you have any doubts about signing it or not at all? Um, no, no, I didn't. I didn't try and go anywhere else. I was just pretty much putting all my eggs in in that basket that I was going to get offered the contract if not 
it would have been a case of me looking to go elsewhere. But at the time, no, it was, it was only it was only uh, Gillingham I wanted to be at. Okay, and obviously going into the new season, obviously Eddie Pennock's in charge. I remember going to Reading. Um, obviously, I remember you getting the start at Reading up up top. I think it's fair to say AD Pennock put a lot of faith in you as a player and when he left quite early on did that change things in terms of the direction of your career at all? Um, yeah, he did put a lot of faith in me. Um, I remember I remember that game well. Steve Lovell come in as manager after that. I don't think anything changed really for me. The only thing that maybe changed was the way the team were playing or how we were doing in the league because we weren't doing great again. Um and obviously the, the objective was to stay up. So, I don't know. I think if AD Pennant was, was still there, I might have played more minutes. Yeah. Which would have helped me uh, to sort of show what I could do. But, no, nah, I don't think it changed too much. And overall, if you had to summarise it, how were things under Steve Lovell, from a team point of view and from a personal point of view? Um... Yeah, it was good. I think I'm not sure how long he when he took over that season, but I played a, a few more games. Uh, I made my first start in the league, uh, but then towards the end of the towards the second half of that season, I was out on loan. So it was it was a mixed season for me because I was involved week in week out with the first team in League One to not being involved. Yeah, it was it was very up and down for me at that time because I wasn't sure whether I was going to be in the squad starting on the bench. So, yeah, um, I went from being on the bench most weeks to, to going out on loan to King, Kingstonian for pretty much the remainder of the season from Jan Feb time. Yeah. So, yeah, that was hard watching the boys play and then me not even being there. It might be a bit of a tough question, um, and you obviously made a few appearances and stuff, but do you feel like you were given enough of a chance that season at Gillingham? Um, personally, no. Okay. But it's obviously down to the manager if uh, they think I'm, I was ready or, or good enough to, to make an impact. At that time, I think the games that I did come on, a lot of them were, were tough tough games one that sticks out was Wigan at home I think it was I think we were 1-0 up holding on to a 1-0 lead come on with sort of just under 10 minutes to go and I, I didn't think I touched the ball okay. Wigan have all the ball and they scored an 89th minute equaliser uh, and obviously it's not my fault but I come on and we don't win the game Yeah. so it doesn't look great on my behalf but yeah I think I got I did have chances um, to prove myself, but a lot of it, the the odds were against me in some of the games that I've come on. In. Yeah, so if you're if you're sort of ten men behind the ball against against a top team, then you can't really do that much as a striker, can you? So yeah, yeah, I'm, it was difficult. I understand where you're coming from, and like you say, you went back on loan to Kingstonian. Is it fair to say you didn't want to go out on loan then? Yeah, I didn't want to go out on loan at all. Okay. But did you feel like you didn't have a choice? Um, yeah, kind of. Um, I think Steve, he didn't say I wasn't going to play, but he wanted me to play 90 minutes. Okay. Week in, week out, which I was doing there, and I wasn't going to get a gym. So from that point of view, you, you, you could see it as a positive, but I wanted to be involved um, at at Gillingham on the bench whatever trying to make an impact for, for the team there and how do you feel I'm <clears throat> just using your situation in context a bit but um, I don't know how aware you are of Gillingham now for example but Joe Walsh the backup goalkeeper he's not he's played the cup games but he's not played in the league yet and he's just turned 18 he's he's played for England at youth level etc he signed a pro deal quite early I think he's been linked with moves higher up and he's tired for quite a big future but do you think it's more beneficial for him to be sitting on the bench every week as a second choice keeper, or maybe to go out alone and get some get some experience. Yeah, it's a difficult one for keepers because I think Tom Hadler had a similar experience yeah. really, where yeah. I was close to him at Gillingham, and if I wasn't playing, say that season, I was out on loan playing every week, and he was in the bench 
not making up the numbers, but there as a backup. Um, so that's a tough decision for Kiefer's. I remember him going out on loan to Gloucester, Tom, this is, and it was the best, like, the best thing he could have done at the time. Yeah. There was three goalies, I think, Edgell and Nels, Thomas and him. Uh, so for him to go out was the best thing that he could have done. Uh, so Joe, I, I trained with him a few times, I remember, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know him too well. Um, it's a difficult one for him because you want to go to a level where you're going to be challenged. He might, if he was to go to a sort of Ryman, a Ryman club, he might find it too easy. I don't know. Yeah. But it's about making the right decision to go to the right club if you're going to. But then again, uh, if he stays, he could get an opportunity unexpectedly and he could push on from there. So Yeah. That's true. Yeah, because with goalkeepers, it's a bit different because they're not going to come on in a game tactically, really, are they? Whereas a, exactly, yeah. They might do. How much of a say would you have in a loan move as a player compared to the staff? Um, a lot of my loan moves, to be fair, were come from the manager at the time or the staff. So my first one, they was looking to get all the young boys out on loan and East Queens did come to the club about taking some players and they put me in Callum's name forward okay. uh, the second Tilbury that was that was Justin Edinburgh who who helped get that helped that, get that one done I think he knew someone at Tilbury right. same with him at Billy Ricky. he was Billy Ricky's manager for a spell and knew someone there Yeah. so yeah um, a lot of the time it was the manager who sorted it out or the club coming to the the uh, to Gillingham asking for me or for someone specific. Okay, fair enough. And obviously your departure from Gillingham came around at, at the end of that season. I think I'm right in saying. And when did you find out? When did you find out you were leaving? And when did you sort of realise that you were leaving? Um, I think it was the week after the last game of the season. But yeah, I, I hadn't been in the squad. I think I'd stayed at Kingstonian until the end of their season and there was one or two more games in League One. Uh, so I come back with a view to being in the squad uh, for Gillingham, uh, but wasn't. So I kind of had a, a feeling that I wasn't going to get offered anything. But at the same time, I thought, yeah, there's a chance that I could come back and and go again next year. Uh, but yeah, I think it was the week after we had our individual meetings with the manager okay. who uh, yeah just sat down spoke about the season and just said that they're not going to offer me anything for, for the next year and when you sort of get the feeling are you looking are you still hoping or are you sort of like looking for other options at that point yeah when you're walking into the into the room having your meeting you're, you're hoping you think there's a chance you could get offered it um, but yeah it was devastating when I didn't but you just got to try and look forward yeah. yeah that's what I've done I had the whole summer to to get it out of my mind and try and focus on my next challenge yeah and do you feel like because I feel like it from a fan's perspective do you feel like you have a bit of maybe unfinished business at Gillingham yeah I think so um, I think I was I wouldn't say had a hype around me but I definitely had a, a reputation for being someone who could score goals yeah I did it. I did at youth team level or twenty under twenty three uh, level, but I never, I never really did in the first team. So from that aspect, yeah, I definitely think there is a little bit. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, but yeah, like I say, you you departed and then headed to I believe right saying Kingstonian on a permanent basis. How did that opportunity come around? Because you've been on loan there. Yeah, that's it. The manager Lee, he. Uh, while I was on loan there in the first season, he said his plans for for next season. He said if if things don't go well at Gillingham, I'll take you here, um, and that obviously did happen. So I I, I I went training with Bromley FC. I was training with Dulwich Hamlet, so I was looking to go a little bit higher. Yeah, uh, but things didn't really work out there. Um, so I signed with Kingstonian. Um, yeah, it didn't go great for me personally, that that move. I don't know why. Yeah. The 
team changed a lot from the season before and I come in late so I come into a team that was pretty much had a pre-season together and I kind of joined with two weeks before the start of the season right okay and you moved on pretty swiftly to back to East Grinstead as well yeah back to East Grinstead the, uh, the team I had my first loan at and it was the same manager Matt Longhurst who had been there since um, I'd stayed in contact like throughout my time at Gillingham with him he'd always try to get me to come on loan if I wanted if I needed minutes or what not okay. um, yeah so he was on the phone said do I fancy coming to East Grinstead I wasn't I wasn't playing as much or as well as I'd liked and I think a change of scenery I needed and it was probably the best decision I've made uh, since I've been in non league I was going to say because maybe you're, you're at Gillingham and it's going fine and then you're for, forced forced out on loan and then you leave the club and it doesn't work great at Kingstonian do you think feel like you just need, in a way need to get things back on track yeah I mean I wouldn't say the league was too easy but I knew I could score goals in the right team and the, t- the way the team played I knew from my time there before so I slotted in pretty much straight away I knew a few of the boys uh, and I went on yeah, to score 20 odd goals in just over half a season so yeah yeah. I was going to say obviously the stats don't lie and you smashed it and um, did you have any qualms about moving on because I know you went to step up again um, well I, I assume you went to step up again um, is that the main decision the main reason behind your decision yeah um, the whole time I was there it was like I don't want to be playing at this level for, for much longer but I knew it wouldn't do me any harm as long as I was scoring, uh, not week in, week out, but pretty much a goal a goal a game at that level. Yeah. So yeah, it was a difficult decision to, to move on, but I knew it was one I had to make really for my career. So yeah, once that season finished, I kind of I kind of knew I would be moving on, just wasn't sure where at the time. And you had the opportunity to go to Concord Rangers. Um, how was that? How did that whole move come about? Yeah, so I signed with an agent around the time a bit, a bit before. So he was in talks with a few, a few Conference South clubs, uh, and Concord obviously. And Conference South at the time had changed managers, were going for a new approach where they were looking at young players who had done well from the leagues below, uh, and they got in contact with my agent, um, and I met with them, liked what I heard, and yeah, and signed for them. And I know you had a couple of injury problems, etc. But how how about your time there? Um, yeah, I, I signed in the summer and I got injured. Literally, I played two pre season games. I was probably two three weeks away from the start of the season. Things were going really well. I was enjoying it, um, and I got an ankle injury. And it was obviously a, a much longer process where you're in non league to to being full-time professional yeah. where I was waiting for scans waiting for doctors appointments so I wasn't really sure what was what was wrong I just knew it wasn't right um, and it was just a, a weird injury in training that ended up needing surgery and out out for six months and that kind of halted my season yeah um, I believe I'm right in saying you moved to Horsham yeah so once I, was, I had the operation, I was still, I'm still at Concord, still like going into training, getting my rehab done there, and I'm getting closer to fitness, and I'm obviously not up to speed, hundred percent with the rest of the boys. Um, so the management there said we think it's best if you go out uh, and get some games. So essentially, it's a loan, and that was around Christmas time. Um, so I'm trying to get myself fit. I think I'm ready for ready for some games, uh, and then they say to go out on on well, dual registration to um, to get some games. So that was I think around yeah around Christmas New Year. I went there, um, and then yeah I've been there since until the season got short. Got cut short. Yeah, how was your time playing? Um, getting back playing after the injury. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, it's a league below Concord. Uh, but still a league above what I was playing last year at East Grinstead. So okay. I've played the league before, 
I know what to expect, but I think for me it was just about getting the, my rhythm back in playing after the operation. It's been quite hard to um, not not get fit, but get the get the sharpness back after so long out yeah. when you're not um, getting rehab on a day to day basis. You've got to do a lot of it yourself, and you've got to manage your what you're doing is by yourself, which is hard. But yeah, I think I've, I'm getting back to where I want to be. And obviously I would have had another 10, 15 games from now to the end of the season to, to get some goals. But obviously that's been cut short now. So You mentioned the season was cut short. What are your thoughts on the whole decision to end the season? Um, I mean, I feel bad for the, for the teams that are sort of runaway leaders that don't obviously get their opportunity to go up yeah. but no one there's always going to be people who are felt hard done by if if they done it on points per game uh, then there would have been people not agreeing it's just it's never going to happen again I don't think in our last time I think we just got to take it on the chin and move on yeah I think I think like I've said to other people no way to end the season is going to be perfect but then I think um, what, what a, few clubs, a few clubs have said is in terms of avoiding the season, you're going to really annoy a few clubs, but a lot more clubs are going to be more settled with it because of the way that contracts work, that sort of thing. So, um, exactly, especially at the level that I was playing at, there's, yeah, there's obviously much more problems than going up or down. There's the fact that teams could go go under if they have to pay people's contracts for three months longer than they should be. Am I right in saying that Horsham were having a bit of a, a promotion push? Yeah, we were, we were doing all right. They started the season strongly and then when I come in, they was having a bit of a dip. Um, it was a little bit inconsistent, but we were just sat outside the playoffs, sort of three, three four points outside yeah. the playoffs. So there was definitely a chance with so many games still to play that, that we could have got in the playoffs and gone from there. Um, but they've only just come up from the league below, so they was having a really good first season in that league. Yeah, not a lot of teams knew what they was about before they before they played them, and that's what gave them so much joy in, the, in their first season back in that league. And then at, at the other end of the scale, um, I believe I'm right in saying that Concord is struggling a little bit. Um, so how do you think their season should end? Uh, well, for them, they've got uh, the FA Trophy, which I wouldn't say they focused on, but they're two games away, home and away leg, away from playing at Wembley. Yeah, yeah. So for them and some of their players, that's, that could be the biggest game of their career. Um, they had a great run to get there. Uh, so they'll be wanting to play that. Obviously, I'll be gutted if they don't. For them, they were focusing more on that, I think, than the league, and their league form slipped a bit. Yeah. Um, but I think they'll be safe, whatever happens for them, if they play the games or they don't, they'll be safe. Yeah. Um, and I don't think much was expected at the start of the season in terms of pushing for promotion due to the, the team. They had a brand new team with, like I said earlier, the young young players coming up, proving themselves. So they've done them well to, to do what they've done. And in terms of you personally, obviously you've just come back from an injury, you've had some time at Horsham. What are your short-term ambitions and what do you see happening next season for you? Uh, at the moment, I'm not too sure where I'll be at. But obviously, I, I, I need to get a, a full season under my belt again. Uh, basically, just look to score as many goals as I can. Uh, get my name sort of back out there as, as a goal scorer in, in them sort of leagues. Yeah. And then see what happens from there. Obviously, there's there's more teams looking for for players out of non-league now, so it's, it's a fact. It's a matter of just getting the goals and then getting my my name back out on the radar to try and get a move back into the whether it be the national league or the football league. And like you say, you touched on the national league, the football league. There, you're only young, sort of early twenties, still got a long way to go in your career. What are your long long term ambitions? Yeah, um, definitely. However long it takes, I'll be working to, to get back in the league. Um, obviously, I've had a few injuries, a few setbacks, but I think as long as I keep working hard, uh, 
get a bit of luck, which you need sometimes. Yeah. There's no reason why I can't can't get back in there. So yeah, this season I'll be looking to to get get the goals to get my name back out there and try and push for a move back into the league. And I know it's a very very long long way away, but where do you what are your plans after football? Um, playing do you want to stay in football or do you have other aspirations um, it's I, I've not really thought about it in terms of I don't really enjoy the coaching side yet okay. I don't know if that will that will change as I get older but I've never really taken to that a lot of my mates in football they do it so yeah I don't know yet what whether I'll be involved in football in, in some way I'd like to think so but it's just finding something that you that you enjoy. Yeah, but no, I do wish you all the best of everything, and um, cheers. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. No worries. So that's that for this episode of Jeff G Meets. I'd like to give another huge thank you to Greg for taking the time out of his day to chat to me. Please do like the video if you enjoyed, and feel free to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel as well. Please check out all of our other platforms, which can be found in the description. And do let us know anyone else related to the club that you think we should get on the show in the future. We do have a few episodes lined up already, so keep an eye out for those, and please check out all of our previous episodes as well if you fancy it. See you soon.